there are three pieces, uh, one in this one and one around the corner, that are part of the Genesis series. And I like all art. I, I don't put myself in a particular genre or school or anything. My work is not pre-sketched or anything. Uh, I just start. But there's been a whole lot of thinking before I start. <coughs> Even if I'm doing representational work, it's not pre-sketched or pre-planned. With this, uh, I was taught, my father was my first teacher, and I was exposed to every aspect of art. Uh, pen and ink, drawing, charcoal, pastel, everything. And the one thing that, uh, that I've been interested in is, where do you go from here? And I know that many times artists are told to find a particular thing mm -hmm. and stay with that. Mm -hmm. I do not subscribe to that. That's just me. I do what I feel like. And in my artist statement, the first line you'll see is, first of all, I do this for me. I enjoy, I have no problems with um, someone giving me criticism, no problem at all. But I'm interested in what I see and what I hopefully can show you. These, all three of these, there are about uh, eight in this series, are originally made from photographs of water. And then it's a matter of how I manipulate those photographs, how I add color to them, how I take color from them, how I build them, in different layers. What I cannot show you is, if you see this on the computer, it's three-dimensional. And that becomes fantastic. So one of the things that I'm trying to do is to do these much bigger. My problem is, I like to control my work. I'm a Virgo. <laughs> and I like to control every aspect of my work. And I cannot, because if I'm going to print these things 30 by 40, I don't have the facilities for that. So I've got to go outside and trust someone else to do this for me. And that's, that's a big thing for me. But um, that's my next step. Uh, as I said, uh, once I started doing this, and again, it was one of those things, serendipity, I wonder what would happen if, and I did this and loved it, and then started uh, getting more and more into it. Uh, I found sometimes in working with the computer, particularly if you're designing, you'll have those sort of um, serendipity moments. You move something with the cursor that you didn't intend to move, and then you realize you've got something else. What I originally started out was with a software that was for charts and graphs. And from that, I developed uh, my math series, uh, which I, I really love. But I, again, I was thinking, well, where am I going to go from here? Now, once I did these, <clears throat> and of course, love the, the colors and the designs, and when you're working with a computer, what is it, 250 million colors or something like that that you have at your disposal? And it's, it's just endless. Uh, the way you can just take one color and go through so many shades of it. And it just, it can blow your mind. And when I saw uh, some of the work down at Miami Basel, and if you've never been, you really need to go. In one, in the main gallery, um, the convention center represented over 300 galleries. So we worked, we, we walked for like four hours one day, four hours the next day, and then went to the art district for another three large galleries, and then to 12 other galleries until you get almost an art overload but it's fantastic when you see the creativity and how much is done. But what I wanted to know, you know, what am I going to do next? And that, you come over this way. This is Shibori. This is based on an 8th century Japanese art form. This is silk. Uh, I have learned how to make more than one copy, which is, is, is difficult, but basically it's one copy. I've been studying the classical folding techniques. Shibori, the closest thing we have to it would be tie-dye, but it's, it's a little more than that. If you've seen some of the beautiful uh, kimonos, and you look at them and you think they've been hand-painted, 
but there are thousands of knots and color added to those knots and then released. That's how we do shibori. It's a, it's a way of folding and tying and twisting fabric. And so I really fell in love with using the silk. And I'm trying more and more to get involved in that and eventually to go to uh, Japan for the Shibori Festival. Um, had written some grants for them. something, nothing's coming through yet, but that's not going to keep trying because I really want to see that, see it in its homeland and see what else they're doing. Because you know, no matter what you see outside of an area, it's only a little bit of what actually exists. Are there any questions? You said you, you're able to, I've seen the Shibori pieces before. Mm -hmm. You're able to replicate? I can make more than one copy at the same time. I cannot replicate it. But I have learned how... Simultaneously. Yes. I have learned how to do that. <laughs> and the first time it, it happened, I was just full of joy. <laughs> but it, it takes a certain amount of skill and patience. And you know, Americans are not particularly known for their patience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, it's, the whole thing is being surprised by what you get. Now, I can control the folds, so I'll know whether I'm going to have a square or a triangle or whatever or a line. I can, I can pre-plan my designs if I wish to. But what I have done, um, there are about seven or eight particular folds. I combine them. None of my pieces are one fold. And so uh, I may combine them, and then I may also uh, add color by hand, something separate from the tie and the fold. But I, I learned this with uh, James and Audrey Brown at the uh, Kennedy Recreation Center. They're doing a program there, STARS, for seniors. And I had a really good time learning the process. And so now I really do as much as possible, because this is something I really feel. These colors are very muted compared to some of the things that you get with the Shibori dyes because they're really very pretty. But it's also, I, did, I discovered a way of backwashing color and to give you this process. Mm -hmm. Okay? Thank you, Daddy.